Are you, are you that much a fan of Sal's artwork? <laughs> Everybody and welcome to the Filipino Freethinkers podcast. It's also a video. I'm Red. I'm Pepe. I'm Kenneth, and here's Max. Hey, Max. <laughs> Did you see that? Okay. We're discussing two things. The first topic is the INC medical mission, and the second is the tragedy just that just happened in Bohol. So let's start uh, first with this very important message. Please donate. Please help Bohol. Here are some links on how you can help. No more complicated shapes for this. Great. Red Cross, uh, 7-Eleven, they, uh, they accept donations there, I think. So anyway, just follow the links. And let's get on with the first topic. The medical mission. Tell us about this medical mission. What was it for? Um, it was for medicine. Uh, <laughs> well, basically the INC, the Iglesia Ni Cristo, uh, which is this giant religious group. Um, decided that okay, we're on Monday. We're going to have millions of people um, go to Metro Manila, and then give them medicine or and other uh, goods and services, food, food, uh, dent- also a dental mission. I think there was some food included. Anyway, Why not? Yeah. Um, in Metro Manila, mm-hmm. and there were five specific places that were outlined. Uh, there's an article here, um, and they caused so much traffic and this uh, the local authorities foreseeing that this would happen were forced to cancel uh, suspend a lot of classes uh, classes in a lot of areas and they even some areas just suspended classes although they didn't expect to be that affected they just suspended classes out of confu- to, to avoid confusion mm. rather mm. so it's pretty weird how so many people are affected by this thing that only one religious group is doing. And yeah, I think it's a bit um, inconsiderate how they are just deciding that, okay, today we're going to fill the roads with people and buses. And sorry, Metro Manila. Sorry, just, just one day. Um, bye. But let's look at it from a utilitarian perspective. Like, the on the... On the whole of it, did they cause more trouble than the event was worth, or did they help more than the trouble that they caused? What What do you think? I I really can't say because I have no idea as to like how good the services they offered were, mm. uh, were the were the medicines they gave um, like effective? Was uh, were their doctors uh, thorough in the diagnosis <coughs> um, and would did the people feel that they were really helped genuinely? Um, I don't know about that, but what I do know is um, they could have done it much better. Mm. There are so many churches of INC all around the Philippines, and for things like these, it's I think it would be better if they just uh, did the did the mission in se- many separate places around the country. Mm. And then not have people go to Metro Manila. Yeah. Instead, yeah. deliver the medicine and services directly to their localities. And I really think that, of course, I understand. Medical missions, uh, they help. Yeah. They, they alleviate suffering and they um, help people stay healthy. Um, but um, this does not really prevent the problem from cropping up again. Yeah. It's not... It's a... Um, it's a one-time, big-time event. It's a temporary. Yeah, it's a temporary solution. Yeah. Uh-huh. You, to make sure that people are healthy, you really have to change um, uh, the state of sanitation, um, hygiene practices, and the percentage of the population, which is doctors and health workers. <coughs> so, um, medical missions help, but what would be more helpful is actually starting like a clinic or a hospital in the localities mm. that are most affected and then keeping those hospitals and clinics running over a long period of time because these things are not solved like with just one with just one event these are things that are that have to have constant attention and need a constant effort being uh, put into them 
As someone who works or helps with the organization of your church, the Episcopal Church, what, what do you, what's your take on this? Uh, well, two things. First, um, I want to get in before the random commenter who will say that, which is why we should spend the money on building hospitals instead of RH implementation. Uh, the other is, um, we do have medical missions, but I found it curious as to, you're saying that they, that the people who were the uh, beneficiaries were brought to certain locations? Yeah. Like, yeah, no, we, we, we actually go on location. Um, there are a number of rather isolated um, Episcopal churches, um, very small ones, where you literally take like an hour or two or four, in some cases, like a hike out in the countryside. Um, and then you go there and then you bring the supplies and you make sure, and you're in constant communication with like the priest who's in charge there and then they use that as a center for distribution because usually they're also in the center of their communities. Um, and, then, and then they go and then every, maybe about once a quarter or so, there's a few um, volunteers from our own church who on their own money, they'll like, they'll, they'll fly off to like Palawan or wherever and then they'll and then they'll distribute the medical goods there, along with maybe usually like a nurse or a doctor. Um, or they'll try to make sure. And then, you know, it's constant communication and make sure. But you go to the location. You don't. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I can't you don't imagine, anything. like, why would you ship those guys? Like, you're saying you take them in a bus and you bring them yeah. to where it's convenient for you? That doesn't make any sense. So it's all centered in Manila, which is where national government is centered, which I guess led Miriam Santiago, Senator Miriam Santiago, mm. to make that comment. Have you, have you read about that? Yeah, I heard about it, yeah. That, uh, <coughs> She said that they're uh, flexing and showing how much power that they hey, they have, how many people they can bring in. Yeah, so, so the, the, those two. If if you want to go on the, um, because you can look at it either with like a bit of uh, malice or with a, I, I, whether the intent is is somewhat malicious or manipulative or whether the intent is uh, genuinely good but misguided. Yeah. Uh, the the first time that our that, for example, our, our church ever brought in beneficiaries um, from, a, from a mission station. We was only last year, last Christmas, for the first time in, I think, a <coughs> decade or so, the parishioners liked it because they could meet the people that, that, they, were that they were helping. Mm -hmm. However, at least us on the, because um, I'm, I'm on the vestry council, uh, for, for the church and we help, I mean, we, you know, we, we more or less organize the church along with our rector. So us on the council, we're just not comfortable with it because, you know, it, it's, it has the feel of like, of, of like bringing in, it's like that St. Louis sideshow attraction thing. Like, hey, come here, look at the people. Um, oh, look, and then look how good we feel. Like we're the ones giving, all I had to do was go to church on Sunday and, and now I can give these like gifts to people in need. Like I feel so great. And now I just walk back home from church. It's not, you know, it doesn't really help them. It, it um, reminds me of, we, we only did it as a calculation thing so that, okay, it, it'll up funds um, for the real missions which will go. Yeah. yeah, I'm reminded of what's written in the Bible. It's this part in the Bible where it says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Yeah. So when you're helping someone, don't be too public about it, don't brag about it, don't make a, make a show of it. Don't create a, met, a traffic jam in Metro Manila Don't make a political it. statement of it. So, but, that, but that's the thing, INC is openly, like they're, well, more or less openly making political statements. They're like, I'm backing these people, Yeah. Um, yeah. and this is how much power we have. So they do have that block voting power? But we do, yeah. I also... Unlike the Catholic Church. <laughs> yeah. And the Episcopal what? Church. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, then I also learned from a friend that um, something similar already happened in Davao last month. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it wasn't on a... Similar to the INC blocking traffic in Metro. It Manila. was the INC. Yeah, okay. And then they, they, they held this medical mission. And then it wasn't even a weekday. But it still caused a lot of traffic. In Davao. Yeah. yeah. So there were jams in Davao. And then, so they knew that this was going to happen. They on still, a bigger scale. Yeah, this is a bigger scale. And yeah. they still didn't choose to do it on a weekend, which would have, even though they knew it, would gonna, it was going to cause traffic jams, at least it wouldn't 
um, it wouldn't you know hassle students and working people but they say that it's because of like their, their worship schedule <coughs> and I'm really I cannot pretend that I, I can respect na your your saying your worship schedule comes before <coughs> inconveniencing other people. Like, I, so, I, you know, we, we, we do appreciate that there was help that happened yeah. here. Like people were helped, suffering was alleviated. But there are definitely better ways that this could have been done. And for the next times, let's uh, let's think of just as <coughs> final words, suggestions on what they should do better next time. So Pepe, you already mentioned that strategy of not localizing all of the help in one location and using many churches as, the set, as their respective centers for, for those medical missions. Another thing is what Garrick mentioned to me a while ago, what Peter Singer taught about effective altruism. Not all of these individuals who participated in this medical <coughs> mission were trained or are particularly adept at performing the things that they were, they were doing. For many of them, it's, it was probably their first time. And a lot of people are already doing what they want to do for many people. The problem is they do not have the budget. And um, INC or any other religious organization has the funds for this. So one, one way they could help is to put all, some of the money that they collect from their parishioners into the, uh, the funds for a medical mission performed by professionals. So no traffic would, would happen. The, the people would, I guess, be just as effective in terms of, you know, one trained doctor could be the, worth several individuals in terms of the, the amount of help they can give. So here's a link to effective altruism. There's that TED talk that he, he did as well. And before we, we move to the next uh, topic, Ken, any other final words on this issue? Uh, well, the, just at, at its most basic, like, I was just really surprised when they said, is a medical mission and it caused traffic um, because they brought the people to the actual parishes. Like that, I, I thought rule one was, I mean, there's people who need help, go to the people who need help, not ship them in a bus to you. I don't really yeah. see. It also Unless limits I'm missing something. The kind of people they can help, because if they're sick, too sick to travel. Exactly, that's, that's the other yeah. thing. Like it's a medical mission yeah. for, so the sick people, so you're bringing them in a bus? I don't know. Okay, well, so much for the medical mission. Let's move on to our next topic. So we're now going to talk about Bohol. Again, a, a reminder to, to help Bohol however you can, but if possible, do make donations. Here are the links once more. They're in the description as well. They're in the description as well. So just a very particular thing that has been making the rounds on social media. It's about that one image. It was in that Instagram photo that was regrammed by Julius Babau. It was an image of the, the Virgin Mary, yeah. and it somehow managed to survive one of the strong quakes that leveled the church that it was in. You're probably looking at that image right this very second. Where do you want it to be? Like, oh no, it's gonna be overwhelming us. Okay, so, so what's the meaning of this? What's the significance of sharing and resharing this single image? Well, in a nutshell, I really think it's just people um, scrambling for something comforting, at least to them, in this period of, uh, like, it's <coughs> devastating, the tragedy that happened in Bohol. So many people died, and so many uh, buildings were destroyed. I'm sure a lot of um, infrastructure was lost. And um, it's just them thinking that, oh, this small thing must have had a reason. Uh, there must have been a reason why this small thing was not destroyed. It's... Uh, and it's a clear example of selection bias, as Garrick pointed out, um, that you decide to ignore um, the other bad stuff because it's overwhelming sometimes, and you just look at this one thing that's a, that's a good thing. So, so as, a, as a religious person, what's your take on this? I just find it really sad that suddenly, because one easily replaceable picture gets saved versus like all of the actual people who died, like there are some people who almost a hundred now, isn't it? Yeah, there, there's some people who need to latch on to that. Um, I get it, like if they've been through a lot of really terrible things, but um, at the same time, I think that when something that bad happens, you need to focus on the people who are hurt, and not so much. Uh, I mean, symbols are important as well, but the tendency 
can be to conflate the importance of, oh, this one church was saved. Oh, this one picture was saved. This must mean that God doesn't hate us or isn't random or doesn't exist. Uh, the, the, the immediate response, I think, still needs to be a human response. Like there are people who are hurt. And I think that it is obscene to point to one object that may have been saved and how that's a grand thing. And it means that all of this was for a reason when there are dead bodies that are never going to be replaced. I mean, mm -hmm. when they're dead people. I guess people just grasp onto anything that they can use for hope, you know, to to keep them from totally sinking in these I, hard times. Yeah, well, but, I'm not, yeah, I mean, we're, I'm, I'm not there. We, it, it must be terrible. It, it, they're going through what they're going through. But, but at the same time, it, the way that, and I'm not saying this is them directly, perhaps not even the original person who shared it, but a lot of the, the context in which that picture is being shared has a triumphalist veneer, which I find rather mm. disgusting. Yeah. Mm. And then it, maybe it's, even, it's not even the people who actually went through the tragedy, but it's the people who, perhaps sitting comfortably in their, in their yeah. chairs in Metro Manila, they can point to this, hey, that tragedy happened in, in Bohol, but look at this, it was saved. So yeah. th th there must be some grand meeting. Checkmate atheists. Checkmate Check atheists. Check Check like, that's fingers. how petty these, some people can be. Mm. That they'll latch onto this in the face of horrible human suffering, but just for their one argument, they'll ignore all of that. They'll hoist this up, um, that, that one symbol. And it can, be, it can be that picture, or it can be the tsunamis in Japan because God's mad at them for supporting reproductive health. All of these things. But that, that's really the way certain fundamentalists seem to think. Uh, yeah, but, you know, I do understand that there are people who need this, who need this kind of help whenever tragedies like this strike. But the skeptic in me still has to ask those questions. Like, what is the meaning of that? Like, is there even meaning in it? Like, how does it even work? Is that image particularly powerful in itself that it somehow deflected the force that was Seeking falling on it? Or flag in was the... the was there a targeting system from from <coughs> heaven that protected it from everything else? Like, I mean, and of course, quest, more and more questions could come out of all of this. Like, why wasn't that targeting system used on the people, people after, yeah. that, you know? And why wasn't that force field, like, installed on every human being that was hurt? And I'm sure, you know, is there, <coughs> is there even a God? Like, that question, of course will be very hard to ask, especially in these times. And I guess we'll just have to accept that these are these tragedies are a part of life. It's a part of nature. Uh, more and more earthquakes will happen. There's nothing special in it. It's been happening for centuries now. There will be end times prophets who will use this situation to, to get their agenda across. The end is near, who listen to us, who have the voice of God, who hear the voice of God. I'm kind of glad, actually, that there, the RH issue is not such a hot topic nowadays because if it were, then you'd expect people relating this to the RH yeah. issue. You know, I mean, I mean, if you're gonna relate it to anything, it might as well be that INC mission. Like, but anyway, um, again, these are the, the links for the for the ways that you can help. Any final words on this issue before we we end it? No, I don't think it. Just um, oh, be vigilant. Yeah, um, whenever you're vulnerable, at least uh, try a bit to not succumb to unreason. Okay, and with that, uh, thank you for watching this episode and see you next time.